Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Here's a segment about the prison pipeline in Illinois, the injustice surrounding it, and efforts by people in Illinois to oppose it. Again, we're here. It's a symbolic march. The school is closed. We're marching to the juvenile detention center. Well, today we're talking about incarceration and schools being closed. And across the nation, there are as a public attack. There's an attack on public education, which public education does. Uh, a lot of black youth are in public education, particularly in Chicago. Uh, and we're talking about incarceration. And what is very true is that there's an overrepresentation of black bodies in the prison system unjustly and unfairly. And so um, that correlates to our mission to see freedom for all people who look like me. And so uh, that's why we're here and that's why we're organizing. I'm actually here supporting uh, a lot of colleagues, friends. Uh, I'm very big on restorative justice. And so a lot of what we talked about today was about the experiences that our young people have with the justice system. Uh, we're standing behind the juvenile detention center where unfortunately a lot of our talent is um, locked up behind bars. Um, we also, we were, we met at a cold school and walked uh, 2.5 miles from that school to the center uh, symbolically to show what happens when we close schools, we open prisons. And so I'm here because uh, restorative justice is a big part of my platform. I believe in creating accountability to the community instead of locking people up. I, I believe in investing in human capital. And I see, especially our young people, as our best asset. And so their voices were amazing, and I'm just here to support. The action today was a symbolic action to kick off the week of action against incarcerating youth. It was also Malcolm X's birthday today. So we walked from a school that's been closed down in the Lawndale community to the Juvenile Temporary Detention Center to symbolize the school to prison pipeline and to show how our young people are being locked out of their schools and locked into prisons. I grew up in the southwest of Chicago um, and I went to CPS for both elementary school and high school. And too many times the lines were blurred between a school and a prison. We had to be humiliated once in a while with surprise uh, searches when we were walking into school. And many times, uh, many of our classmates did not come back from a weekend. They were either shot or arrested. And too many times, um, I've been, I'm 25 now, and I've been to more funerals or welcome back parties than I've been to uh, college graduations in the last six years. And then what's even more shameful is that people like Barack Obama go on TV and they blame us for our quote unquote values. But what about their values? They deported two millions of our brothers, sisters, mothers, and parents. What are we supposed to do after they deport them? And what are we supposed to do when his administration is the one that's closing down all our schools and spending trillions of dollars killing our Palestinian, Afghani, and Iraqi brothers and sisters. And with his administration saying that we are not good enough for the education that they are giving their children. Part of the problem is that, that they go into our schools and they pick out a, a certain percentage of students that will be incarcerated by the time they're an adult. Students are most important and we need to fight for our own education and you know the belittlement of students is not right and the school to prison pipeline is the worst thing possible. Well some of the, the solutions are closed prisons, closed juvenile detention centers. Instead of sending our kids to prison, provide them with counseling, provide them with things that will help them you know, have a better life instead of into a life of crime from one, from a school that's not teaching them anything to a, pri to a juvenile prison to an adult prison. The reason why um, this work is important to the Alliance and, the, and my organization is because we know that although 5% of the population are students that are identify as queer, so uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning, or queer, um, they make up 15% of the prison systems or the criminal justice system. Um, similarly, right, nine out of 10 young black men come into contact with the criminal justice system in this country. Um, generally, all of these identities intersect. So if you're queer, identified, if you're black, and also may have like a learning disability, the likelihood that you graduate nowadays is almost none. And so you'll end up in a facility like this one, you'll end up out on the streets, you'll end up homeless. There's a huge homeless uh, crisis in the, in the youth uh, queer community today. So we're out here right now 
saying that this is important to us. This is we need to take the millions of dollars that are invested in this prison system and invest it back into our children, their education. Right? There, there are schools in Chicago that their physical education is an online course. There are things that defy logic, and so today we're saying this needs. We need to be logical about the way that we treat our children, and we need to invest in our future and the, right now. Right? So that's that's why we're here today.